Hey everybody, it's Brittany at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. And I am here with another home tour for you. Today I want to show you Cyrus Caracal. And we will check out his entire enclosure for those of you that are new to us. We get a lot of people asking how big are their enclosures and you know, they need more space and things like that. We do try to give them as much space as possible. He's currently hiding under his platform over there, so hopefully he'll come say hello. But the sad truth is that they are in captivity, so unfortunately um, they can never go free. They were born and raised in cages. His neighbor is Miss Chaos right there. We'll do her tour at another time, but this is where we're going to start. Chaos and Cyrus came to us after having been housed with dozens of other cats uh, for breeding for the pet industry. Hi, sir. Hi, Cyrus. Hi, cute boy. Do you want to give the, the tour with us? He's like, sure, welcome to my home. And so Cyrus and Chaos came to us with another serval named Zucari, and yeah. And we were told that Cyrus and Chaos were, they were trying to breed them for the pet industry. So we did make sure they were spayed and neutered, and then we did put them back together. And for a very short while, it worked out. But ultimately, we could tell Chaos absolutely did not want to have to share space with uh, Cyrus anymore. So what we've done is we put them in an enclosure where they are near each other, but not together. So you see this little doorway here. You see that both guillotine doors are down and locked. And Cyrus has one side of it, and we'll do his tour today. And then Miss Chaos has the other side. So you can see he has all these beautiful bird of paradise plants. He absolutely loves laying in them. And I just think the flowers just look so much like his ears. <sighs> he really likes this plant. So most of the time you'll find him over here under his platform. He does have a big concrete den here. And this den has a nice little window, so if we ever needed to peek in on him and see what's going on in there. But there's a lot of sand and dirt on the bottom, so it's cozy and comfy for him. Also, it keeps him cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. <laughs> He's just traipsing through his flowers. So we're going to walk his entire enclosure, and I'll just show you all of his little details and we'll stop back on the other side of the tunnel. So this is just another view and he has a feeding lockout right here. That is where he knows he will get breakfast every single day. There's a concrete slab in there where we put the food. There's a water bowl. We raise up the water bowls because wild cats like to pee in water. It helps um, keep them, yeah, it helps keep them a little more incognito in the wild so they can't be tracked by predators. But here in captivity, we really want them to have fresh water all the time. So we lift it up off the ground. That way they can't spill it or play in it or pee in it. Is that right? Is that right? All right. So he has this little doorway here. And I don't know if he'll follow me, but he can walk himself right through there. And then he's got this big area out here. There's a tree stump den. There's a lot of palmettos. He's got lots of toys he can roll around. So that's the doorway he could walk through if he so chooses. He also has this big platform here with a ramp. So he's got three different levels. He can also lay under it in the nice cool sand as well. Then he has this long tunnel here. She can walk through that. Yet another guillotine door. All of these doors can be open and closed to shift him around. So say we need to come into this section and um, cut back some ferns or uh, take out a tree stump or something along those lines. And we just shift him far away from it, make sure he's locked away. Then we can enter and do any kind of maintenance we need to. So this is another big concrete den that he has. It also has a little peak window so that we can see what's going on in there. 
It's a really good place to look for paw prints a lot of the time. So here's another view back. And he's got some more toys up there. Each one of these bubbles um, connected by the doors and tunnels is anywhere from 12 to 1800 square feet. And then they all have multiple sections. So here's a closer look at one of the feeding lockouts. He actually doesn't eat in this particular one, but we make sure that each section has a food area and a water area so that if we are shifting them around for maintenance and it might be more than one day, we know that they're gonna have an area that'll be really simple for us to feed and make sure they have water. We use these ceramic tiles to cover the water bowl so that helps keep debris from falling trees out of it. So another view back. I think he'll meet us at the end. Right here is one of Cyrus's safety entrances. So we always have a two door system between us and the cats. So if we did have to go into this section for maintenance, we would be able to undo these clips and this lock, lock ourselves in this little bubble, and then go in the interior door. So each section has a safety entrance so that each section is always as secure as humanly possible. So here's another view back at that feeding lockout, that den that we saw, one of his toys. And then this curves back around. So we would walk this exactly like a cleaner would. So we're right back to this tunnel and this door. And here's that same platform we saw before, just now we are closer to it. And we're gonna keep going around the corner. So another area with a lot of foliage. He likes to weave in and out of those palmettos. He has a den up here. This is the one he likes to spend the most time in when it's not raining. When it is raining, he does use the concrete dens. Here is the other safety entrance. This entrance is, there's one entrance to either side of the bubbles. So you can see the exterior, then there's the door into that bubble, or we could choose the door into this bubble. Here is his official feeding lockout. And the way that you know it's his official one is it has this chicken wire around it. We do put that around their feeding lockouts because we wanna make sure that they never feel threatened by vultures or large birds, anything that's gonna come and try to steal their food. You showing them how you like it in there? So the other huge advantage to a feeding lockout is that it is a small space. So I could actually very easily close him in there and our vet could take a really close look at him. Um, you could put flea medication on him. You could potentially give him a vaccine, or we would be able to put a transport cage right on the other side of the door, and then he'd just walk into it and we can carry him wherever we need to take him. So that is a huge purpose of the feeding lockout besides just feeding the cats, of course. So we are right back over here where his beautiful birds of paradise are. Here's another view at his den. You hanging out in your favorite corner? Thanks for letting us see your house, bud. Yeah. You were a very gracious host. Yes, you were. Very gracious host. Yeah. you do have any questions about the way our enclosures are built or would like to see more of them, just visit bigcatrescue.org slash cages. All right, bud. See, bye-bye. <laughs> it's like, not today. See, bye.